Stuart Varney is going to do a typical pretentious rant here like he always does. And he's going to build a complete straw man about what socialists believe and what liberals believe. Listen. To say I was surprised is an understatement. I was flat out shocked. A socialist demands tax cuts and welfare cuts. Who would have thought? Here's my take. Unfortunately, we are not talking about the United States. Oh, no. We're talking France. Yes. This belongs in Ripley's Believe It or Not, doesn't it? But Francois Hollande has seen the light. This morning, he called for 11 billion euros worth of tax cuts on top of the 30 billion already on the table. But wait, there's more. Government spending will be cut by 50 billion. And those cuts include a slice taken out of France's sacred welfare system. This is Francois Hollande, a socialist. He leads the party of that name, the Socialist Party. He was elected to tax the rich and beat up private enterprise. And now he's cutting taxes? What's going on? There's an easy answer to that. His approval rating has hit a historic low for any French president. And his party just got truly clobbered in the elections. Finally, He's been dragged to reality. Socialism doesn't work. You can't have cradle-to-grave welfare without strong economic growth. And you can't have growth without a robust private sector. And for that, you need lower taxes and less government. Francois Hollande has seen the writing on the wall. So let's bring this home to America. I have a vision of a collectivist rout this November. The left swept out of power in a crushing repudiation of their all-government, all-the-time policies. Is it possible that President Obama would then see the light just like Francois Hollande? Probably not. But what about a similar revolution in the presidential election of 2016? Now you're talking. If tax cutters win, America could be a dynamic society again. Okay, okay, okay. It's just a dream. But after the French tax cuts, surely anything is possible. And in this long national nightmare known as the Obama era, it's surely okay to dream, isn't it? So let's break this down a little bit. I love how he's shocked. He's like, oh, the, a French socialist is demanding tax cuts? Oh my goodness, this is amazing. You idiot. Socialists, okay, and that's not even really what he is. Yes, he's a member of the Socialist Party, but he's really a social democrat. There's a difference. Socialism is further left on the spectrum. A social democrat is somebody who believes in a hybrid system of capitalism and government, okay? That's what he is. That's what every, you know, so-called socialist party and every socialist, socialist nation in the world is. They're really social democrats. But they're always in favor of tax cuts, but they want tax cuts for the right people. You know, uh, socialists across the board, or social democrats, and progressives and liberals across the board, we love tax cuts if it is for the middle class and for the poor. We don't like them when it's for people who make a billion dollars a year. Why? Because we're not fucking idiots. They already have a historically low tax rate right now, and we live in a world where 80 people have more money than the bottom 3.5 billion people, okay? 400 Americans have more money and have more wealth than the bottom 50%. Six people, just the Walton family, they have more money than the bottom 40% of America. All right, when we live in that world, yes, you should tax the rich a little bit more, okay? I'm, oh, we love tax cuts. We love tax cuts for the middle class and the poor. Look, there's a reason why President Obama always used that $250,000 number. He's like, look, man, if you make $250,000 or less, I'm not coming to raise your taxes. I want to cut your taxes. You fucking bet your bottom dollar on that, okay? And that's another thing that this guy completely misses. He, he glosses over the fact that Obama has cut taxes time and time again. He's like, well, if only our president can learn from this tax-cutting French socialist, then that would be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> you moron. 95% of the Bush tax cuts are permanent now because of President Obama. 95%. All right. There's been 11 small business tax cuts under President Obama. Now, keep in mind, George Bush himself tried to get his tax cuts permanent. He couldn't do it because the Democrats said, oh, that's crazy. Those rates are too low. That's insane. Ninety five percent of them Obama made permanent. Eleven small business tax cuts. Furthermore, he's acting like, oh, all government all the time. That's what Obama does. That's what these liberals do. Really? Then why did Obama cut 700,000 government jobs? 
Why do you do that? He's just dead wrong on the facts. That's the problem. And how many private sector jobs has Obama created? That, that's capitalism. That's what Stuart Varney loves or pretends to love. 8.9 million jobs. 8.9 million private sector jobs created under Obama. Uh, how did his boyfriend jo George Bush do? His boyfriend George Bush lost private sector jobs. 646,000 of them. See, this is the problem with guys like Stuart Varney. They're just, again, he's just ranting based off of what his perception of Democrats is and what his perception of uh, Obama is. He's not going based off what the actual numbers say. And then the final thing I'll mention here is uh, the last point he makes that, well, if only we cut taxes across the board, then everything will be fantastic. It will be a dynamic economy again. No, see, this is where he goes into fucking kookyville. And he just disregards what the majority of economists say and what the science says. Which is that if you cut taxes for the rich, which, make no mistake about it, that's all Varney really wants to do. Uh, if you cut taxes for the rich and deregulate, which is Reaganomics, which they love, which is what they're always pushing for, that will lead to an economic crash. Now, why am I saying that? I'm saying that because that's exactly what George W. Bush did! George W. Bush got in office, right, early 2000s, and then 2008, we have the Great Recession and the subprime mortgage crisis. Gee, I wonder why that is. Because we had eight years of his deregulatory policies and eight years of his tax cuts for the rich. You know, he acts like George the Bush years didn't happen. Well, if we just cut taxes and deregulate, things will be great. Except that when we did that, we crashed the economy, you dipshit. And the same thing with the Reagan years, too. You know, the Reagan years, the, the Republicans love to to, you know, look at that era through rose-colored glasses. But here's the problem. The second Reagan left office, the economy tanked. Now, why is that? Because whenever you cut taxes and deregulate, what happens is the economy goes through boom-bust cycles, which means that everything takes off, and it looks like, oh my God, there's so much wealth being created, there's so many jobs being created, but it's all fake, it's all monopoly money. Why? Because credit is loose. Credit is loose, and it's, it's a house of cards, it's fake money, because it blows up in your face later on. That's what happened with Reagan, that's what happened with Bush, it was exactly what happened in the 1910s and the 1920s, which led to the stock market crash in 1929 and the Great Depression. These are the same lessons of history we learn over and over, but he arrogantly calls for the same thing to happen again.